Hi folks, here we have another part of the deep learning section of the big data application and, and analytics course. This section covers right hailing. And uh, this field is what's so interesting about today is we have these trivial areas like uh, matching, well, it's not totally trivial, but somehow compared to deep cosmic principles of fundamental physics and uh, somehow matching. Finding out how to how to place cars so they're best suited for picking up customers is is a interesting problem, but not really earth shattering. And yet these earth these interesting problems I recommend predicting what video to watch, predicting where to put cars, <coughs> predicting what uh, what uh, segments to put onto a web page. They are worth so much money because there's so many people impacted by them that you can just deploy a hundred brilliant machine learning experts on them to solve them. And that has changed totally the sort of <coughs> a mix of problems done by done by the world. Previously, you know, when it was banking was dominating the IT, then they did put a lot of great people onto databases, but not into other areas because they just went that they didn't have a high return on investment. But designing a new deep learning application has a huge return on investment if that application is relevant to an, uh, to a problem which has which is multiplied by a billion because there are billions of people um, interested in it. All right, so this is a relatively long section, and here is a sort of um, general general comment on the right hailing problem. So what, what do you have to understand? Well, you better know when people will need them, and uh, that will help the people and also the drivers of the cars, because the cars, the drivers of the cars want to position themselves optimally so they're near the customers. Um, and that's startle as it points out here, the older people might need to be um, treated with less urgency than younger people. If it's wet, it makes a difference, or snowing. <coughs> the time of day is obviously critical because the traffic patterns dramatically depend on the time of day. Um, and the, the you know if customers go use right handling as they're going to do to get to work every day, then that it becomes a sort of it has to work. And of course, you have to predict the delays the drivers will face in picking the customers uh, up. Well, we have to do everything securely because uh, this is this is, this information we're using is got um, customer specific data there, which could be uh, private. And we also know about uh, municipality because. Uh, the driver will make more money in some municipalities than the other. They get better tips and things like that. And uh, as we don't, the right handing companies don't operate everywhere, they should probably choose to operate in the areas they make most money. Uh, we want to make certain that we track every, the drivers so there are no scandals. And here is a link for the Uber technology. So we can um, get some information from the IPO filings. Both Uber and Lyft had in, uh, initial um, offerings recently. They actually haven't done very well. They've gone down since the offerings. <coughs> and it's the IPO for Uber mentions AI six times, machine learning 11 times, and algorithm 16 times. <coughs> and says that data science and algorithms are very important. Well, so they have 10 billion trips. Well, that makes um, that's big data. And the big data uh, from the history of big data allows them to make uh, marketplace decisions, where to put the cars and things like that. And it has natural language and dialogue systems. We saw that with retail. Uh, that you need to have good um, automated interaction models. 
There's lots of computer vision in anything involving cars, because cars can be tracked by vision, and cars can use vision to drive better. Uber and Lyft both have a significant um, self-driving car investment, because they wish to be able to go into the to the business which offers uh, ride hailing with self-driving cars. And of course, uh, you can use um, machine learning based on sensor processing for looking at locations, examining crashes, and for matching drivers and passengers. You also need to do or have good routing technologies to get the cars to go to the best place. I remember times uh, Uber's routing <coughs> sent me off the left field. That was when the road between uh, Bloomington and Indianapolis was all messed up by construction. All right. So Uber and, and then presumably Lyft both have a very significant internal proprietary um, algorithms. And uh, notice Uber has Uber Eats and Uber Freight, and they also will use these technologies in somewhat different ways. Because uh, if you're doing eats, then um, cu customers in a fixed place, restaurants in a fixed place, and you need to get from A to B in the best way fashion, best fashion possible. And uh, you need to know how long meals take, because they actually take quite a long time. When I was using some um, over the summer to deliver for our students, it took up to an hour to prepare meals. Uh, when I was in Milan, where the local taxi company had basically uh, tried to destroy Uber, um, there were far too few um, cars and Ubers and taxis for the demand, and the pricing was right all over the place. As they matched, um, they put up the price when there weren't enough cars to match the demand. Um, it was actually quite stressful in Milan. Um, so, of course, this is always predicting the future from the past. That's why these things are time series. You have data labeled with time and space. That's Uber's basic data. And you need to predict things which are labeled by time and space. And um, Lyft tries to get the customers to go to areas where the drivers will make the most money, because that's the way the drivers will be happy. And Lyft and Uber both want happy drivers, do they not? Um, typically, if you ask your Uber and Lyft driver whether they're happy, they say, well, yeah, I'd rather get more money, but it's it has interesting opportunities because it provides a very flexible work environment. All right, so if you want to build the actual app, there are many ways of building the app. The, the app is basically a user interface. Um, here is an article which actually tells you how to use a time, conventional time series algorithm to predict forward in time. Here is a large tutorial at, at this AI um, 2019 conference by Didi, which is the Chinese right hailing company. And here's a one really wonderful tutorial by Yan Lu from USC, who works with Didi on um, more detailed aspects of the use of um, Deep learning and time of a time series prediction uh, using a mixture of concurrent and convolutional networks. If we look at this general problem we have, it's uh, we're trying to predict to the future in time, and we can want to do that for traffic, healthcare, progression of illness, climate, what have you. So these this problem is a very generally important problem. Here we have from the DD tutorial, their transportation brain. <coughs> we have a bunch of, um, of um, map services, the pickup locations, estimated time of arrival, the navigation, the planning of the routes. We have to gather all possible data from uh, DD itself, from the cloud source data from customers and hangers on. We have to optimize the whole system, demand and supply, the order dispatch, the pooling of the cars. Lots of all the right handing companies tend to have a pooling option where multiple customers share the same car. 
Then we have to have various forms of mobility, taxis, expresses, carpools, premier, self-driving, walking, what have you. And uh, then we have to manage the whole thing, signals, freeways, traffic guidance, crash management, AI dispatch, and so on. Accident, we have to analyze uh, these things as well. So this is a pretty sophisticated um, system. It's interesting, the taxis were so simple. They were a person with a phone and a taxi with a phone. That was it. And here is the successor to taxis. All right, here we have map services. <coughs> uh, we have to position the cars and Passengers on the map, that's actually non-trivial, because I remember when I'm waiting for my Uber or Lyft, the hardest problem is actually where to wait, because the, the, the instructions are not often precise. Uh, we have to estimate the time of arrival, because that's what you advertise to the customer. You have to worry about these red parts here, which are high traffic. This is London. And uh, you also have to match the signals from the GPS to the map. Map services. Here is this map matching problem of mapping GPS to the position in the road, uh, which is um, not trivial in itself, a standalone um, machine learning application, because remember the measurements are not precise, and they can possibly be associated with multiple roads when you have lots of roads close to each other, and you have to actually use continuity that people aren't going to the two parallel roads, the car is not going to go back and forth between those roads on a single trip. They'll choose one. So here is an example of a some sort of measurement, actual, lo actual location. The red must be actual, the black the measurement. And um, obviously, we put, we, uh, like many of these image processing problems, we want continuity. As I said, we don't want to do this. That's not a very plausible trip. It's possible at once, but not multiple times. Uh, route planning. How do we get from here to there? How do we route? Which which driver do we route to which customer? Um, so that's the journey initiation is mapping um, cars to customers. And here we have the journey implementation, how we go from the beginning to the end of the trip. And how do we fold in dynamically the um, traffic? Because companies like Uber and Didi have obviously a lot of traffic information and can reroute their cars around disasters, whereas people like you and me find it much harder to do that. Uh, we don't have quite such a good feeling as to the, to the scale of a particular disaster, though the map, the Things like the Google Map and equivalent do that do that information. So uh, here we have some some mathematics, namely the roads are a weighted graph because they go from A to B to C to D to E to F to G, and they each of the those graphs links has a has a weight the the length of it, and you try to build a graph where the probably the edge weight is the travel time on that graph, and you want to find a way of getting from where you want to, where you are, say A, to where you want to go to F, in a way that <coughs> minimizes the total traffic cost. And that probably is, um, well, there are many ways of doing it. Um, it might even be that this is one of the fastest ways, I don't know. The alternative is that, which is, 11, and this is more than 11, so it's actually the obvious route is the best. All right. I should point out that uh, I pointed out in the previous slide, Dijkstra's algorithm is a greedy algorithm. Greedy algorithms are iterative algorithms that make the local minima, the local optimal choice at each step. Um, so when they have a complex graph, they will go around, they will go do the uh, the simplest choice at each step, which may not be the best. Um, here is a, 
um, a plot of various algorithms in uh, which have different amounts of pre-processing time and <coughs> different amounts of query time. And you obviously need to um, uh, query fast, and, but, and you can afford a certain amount of pre-processing times. And this was a Western European road network. And uh, really quite a wide range of between the pre-processing time, then we're making a giant table of everything, 10,000 minutes. There was no pre-processing time for the greedy algorithm, but then it takes longer in uh, real time. The table lookup just gets you the answer, so it's the quickest real time answer. All right. <coughs> Traffic forecasting, where you have to include rush hour effects, uh, these uh, which are gen sort of generic, and also the uh, sort of statistical effects of um, accidents, which happen inevitably at different places at different times with different uh, levels of extremity. And um, congestion is probably, well, can, of course, accidents create congestion, so these are related. Um, issues, and uh, we look. We learned about uh, long, short-term memory networks, which are uh, one of the more sophisticated recurrent neural nets. This problem is a natural for recurrent networks because it's um, time series, and recurrent networks are designed to do time series. And uh, autoencoder is trying to abstract the essence of the problem, and so that that could represent the overall traffic dense density. And uh, then you can combine the LSTM and the autoencoder to get the answer. So here we have results from this uh, new method, which is the deep LSTM mixture model, which is this one here, which is always the smallest. And you can see if it's projecting from five minutes to 60 minutes into the future. They're not here trying to do climate forecasts of years ahead, but just, I mean, for Uber and Lyft, I would say they probably only need the next, you know, an hour or two is all they need. Because uh, things change so rapidly, that, and also their cars can self-adjust on that type of period. So they don't need to do a huge uh, time into the future. Here is the non peak R with errors of, the, of around 5.5%. Similar results here for um, peak R's, although the less, the less uh, sophisticated methods do much worse in this case here. The historical average doesn't have the peak R uh, built into it. Uh, but here for 60 minute forecasts, these errors have jumped up. And um, actually, for both non peak R and peak R, they jumped up um, and are now near 10% uh, or 8% for the, uh, the uh, deep uh, mixture model. In any case, it certainly is always better than the other, other methods. Uh, these are these other methods, historical average. On some cases, the regression model and ARIMA is a standard. Uh, um, model used in time series, <coughs> and the data is actually pretty old data. Um, and here we have uh, some uh, post-accident forecasting, and again the um, this um, <coughs> um, deep mixture here is doing better. This one has got a 1% error, and uh, these are probably the ones to look at. These are methods here, and uh, I would say they're typically better than 30% as plotted here, but uh, these key ones here, maybe it's only uh, a little over 30% better. So you can also use a convolutional neural net, viewing this whole thing as an image. 
and um, you um, there have been quite a few times with deep learning we haven't as we haven't gone through the theory that's not obvious where we actually take a problem which is not normally thought of as an image and think of it as an image because then we know how to apply convolutional neural nets to it. Um, so here we're trying to predict the traffic throughput, speed of traffic. Now here's a, a result which I think is the most sophisticated, where you think of things as graphs, and uh, you have uh, you connect the graphs by links, which um, and you can actually look at several different graphs: the road network graph, uh, the graph that. Uh, is formed by things being near each other, the locality graph, that's a very standard graph. And here we have a slightly more subtle graph, the graph of functional relationship. Um, police stations tend to have the same effect on traffic, namely calming it down wherever they're placed. And um, as always in these problems, you define distances. And you wait, the, you, you have links between the graphs and nearby points are Linked together with a weight that is which is um, reflects the distance you choose for the problem. This comes from uh, uh, I think yeah uh, the Yan Lu diffusion convolution recurrent neural net which mixes these. Um, <coughs> Convolutional methods for the graph and uh, LSTM for the time series. And it's pretty sophisticated and I ha we have not succeeded in reproducing the results yet. Uh, but I think it's amazing that uh, such a commodity problem has such a sophisticated approach. So here, we, well this we've seen this data set, these data sets before, 2012. Uh, and then we have a 2017 data set, and uh, you can see that they have data spread around the major freeways in um, Los Angeles and the Bay Area. And uh, you have different uh, forecasting methods. Again, we're looking at the mean absolute error, which is in the few two to five percent range. Uh, it actually does. Um, better in the Bay Area than it does in Los Angeles. But always the uh, one which mixes LSTM and com graph convolutional networks does better. And if you take this best method and remove the spatial part, which is uh, green, or remove the temporal part, which is blue, you get worse answers. Um, Interesting, if you are doing 15 minutes, the spatial part's most important because there's not much time happening in time. If you're doing one hour, the time part is most important, and removing the time makes the most difference. An interesting um, uh, effect. Here is a picture of the sort of uh, DD in uh, Beijing, and uh, some sort of display of what's going on, and the various functions that are supported by, remember that transportation brain. So this is what the brain is trying to understand. I at least think that this problem is, is quite clear, you ought to be able to do it, because everything is, we have a good intuition as to what affects what, and that actually makes it much easier to build a good deep learning network. Um, I pointed out these three graphs. Uh, this illustrates the graphs, there was the, um, um, well, here we have region one is connected uh, to region two uh, spatially. Uh, region four is connected uh, by the road, spatially is the neighborhood. And region three, they're both schools. Three is connected to one by being both being schools. So you see here on this single graph, the three types of networks. The local network connecting one or two, the road network connecting one and two to four to six, and then the the, uh, the similarity in function connecting one to three, 
and um, not so I don't think a five uh, five has not got anything special connecting it to. And then we just have to forecast these traffic densities. And we do that by getting the graph. Um, and uh, G is graph here, Ra is recurrent, C is convolutional. And there's this uh, pretty interesting paper by Gengadar. These are quite hard problems in my opinion. Um, well, the, this points out that the problem of matching drivers to, to uh, passengers, here's the passengers, here's the cars, is non-trivial. It's uh, the min, such problems have been actually looked at for, uh, within the computer science literature, but uh, they're still non-trivial. And it's a large-scale distributed computing problem related to scheduling problems that we look at. Um, and you can actually see that when you order an Uber or a Lyft, or actually in Milan, it was particularly dramatic. But they spent a huge amount of time and sometimes failed to find a, a ride. Um, but it's non trivial time to, to get the right link. Of course, the driver has to agree to do it, so it's more than just identifying the driver. Here is a. Um, a comparison of all these different methods for Beijing and Shanghai. I tell you, this is work by Didi with uh, the USC group. And um, the uh, fanciest method gives the best answers always. And they're suddenly much better than traditional machine learning. <coughs> in, some, <coughs> in some cases, they have two measures of error, root mean square and uh, mean absolute precision. And the only there to, they, 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 these, these are the only viable methods these bottom four. And they're all sophisticated deep learning methods. Um, well, here is an interesting comment about um, how the next generation will actually use reinforcement learning to uh, maximize the driver's experience, including their income. And you also have to maximize the driver's experience and the customer's experience. So you want them both to be happy. And you can you have the reward, which is the happiness over, say, the day. And you have to look at the impact of the current decision. And if you send somebody to a place they can't get out of, which again, I remember in one place I get, went to, I couldn't get out of it because Uber wouldn't send anybody there because it was. There was too much traffic to get out, so I had to walk. And so here we have, finally, I point out how this can be generalized to a general geospatial time series, which is a mixture of a recurrent and a convolutional. And there are many methods that have been looked at, including um, actually replacing the recurrent by one of these new sequence to sequence networks which are used in speech recognition, which no longer use LSTM. And um, we can look at traffic, uh, cars and runners in a race, right hailing cores, earthquakes, what have you. And they all should be tackled by the same type of problem. So I think this is a really amazing area where fundamentally new ideas in geospatial time series have been produced by the right hailing industry and the, the, the highly qualified academic partners. All right, so um, that's it, the end of our discussion of right hailing. Thank you very much.